So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Basola from Curval.com and uh, today we're going to do part 2 on how to create functions in Power Query and uh, for this video I'm actually teaming up with Lars Schraver so he has a blog post on how to document in functions and uh, he's actually doing a three part uh, blog well, he's already done the part one and we are going to go a little bit through this, this documentation to see how we document the function once we've created if you don't know how to create a function just check part one of the series and uh, you will see exactly how to do it so this is part two so without any more delay let's start so here we are in the ssbi blog this is lars blog make sure that you come here and check it out in case you haven't and this is where he has a landing page for the three blog posts that he's going to post very soon so what he has for now is the writing documentation for custom functions part one and this is the one that we are going to review today to be able to document the function that we created on the previous video so uh, this is a very technical blog, it's absolutely amazing, it has all the small uh, details, anything that you would wish to know about how to document a Power Query function. I will of course don't have time to go through every part of it, so I will go directly to the core and uh, show you how to document it. And then if you want to know all the details about it, then you come here and check it out. Or if you have a specific question that I will not cover probably then the, everything is documented in here so i will post a link to the landing page so you will be able to then check out part two and three okay so um i think we will start uh, with what we need to document a function so the power query team has actually given us a few things for us to be able to document our power query functions and is the documentation.name, dot description, dot example, and documentation dot description, long description I think it's called. Um, and uh, Lars is doing a great job describing what type of fields they are, so what you can actually document. And uh, again, in his blog post you have all the details about this, so make sure you check it out. What I've done, so we don't make this uh, video too long. Uh, actually, we're going to document the function that we created to import Excel files from OneDrive Persona. And I've already gone ahead and wrote the code, okay? Because I don't want you to look at me writing this. So what I basically have is all the parameters that are needed in here. And then I have documentation name, so I call it get Excel files from OneDrive Persona into Power BI. And then you can describe a little bit what the function does. So it has all the necessary code to get Excel files from OneDrive, not for business, but personal. I have to change that. Um, you can have a long description when you want to more detail about what that is. And then, for example, like here I explain that this function requires three parameters. There is ID, out, key, and EM. And you will find the parameters in the embedded code. You have the possibility to create a category for this documentation the source so this will be a link to the youtube video um, documentation author so who actually made the function documentation examples and this is great if you this is perhaps not the best example but uh, this you could say okay if you use this function you will get this result back in this case, I haven't done it that way. What I've done is, okay, this is how you get the embed code. This is an example of the keys that you need. And this is the result you should expect, the URL that you need to be able to get the Excel file. So once you have this documented, how do you do? Well, you just, you know, our function is an expression that goes between this let and this in and then in the middle we have our function what we need to do is to wrap it in another expression in another let in so it's like a nested let in so you have uh, the function and then the documentation how about we take a look into um, a real case in uh, in power query right i think it will be easier so let's move into power query 
so we are now in Power Query and I have already made a copy of the function in to Power Query. Uh, I have actually um, added it to my Power BI functions and scripts. In GitHub I will post a link to this and here you have the actual code. So if you want to copy it, but this is already with the documentation, you can just go to raw and copy everything, okay? Um, but what we want to do uh, is we have a function, we want to document it, we go to the advanced editor and as you can see this is the let in expression that I was talking about before and we need to wrap this in another let in expression to be able to accommodate for the documentation. So we will write a comma here. I've already copied the documentation code that you saw in the um, in uh, in the presentation before if you want to document this everything after this i never remember the names in english so this is what you can change uh, this was wrong for example so let's change it one drive personal okay link to youtube i don't have the link yet i will put it later on and then we have to have, you can see here, something is wrong, of course. We have to have a another let first. So you have now one let, you have the function expression, and then you have the documentation with another in, and then you're done. So what happens now? You can see the title here, get the Excel file from wide draft personal. You can see here the, the small description. Uh, this function requires three parameters. Da, 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 da. Then you can see what type these parameters should be. And here you have the example of uh, if you have a sample query, you can put it here. So this is what the input, and this would be the output we would expect. Of course, I cannot have an output because I don't know what your excel file would look like but you could actually write it like you will get your the contents of your excel file or something uh, so as you can see if you are sharing files within the organization if you are sharing files like uh, i am doing for example in github or anywhere else it just helps to have the functions documented so people know how to use them okay and even for you in the future i mean you're helping yourself uh, this is very easy that you will remember now, but perhaps you won't remember in a week or two, so or a month or a year. So make sure you document it. It will make it uh, easier for everybody to reuse your code. And functions are basically that you reuse code, piece of code. So yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, this is all for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. Uh, it is extremely useful to document your work and perhaps more documentation should have been done in there you should could comment how the lines of code and you definitely should do that i just don't want to make the videos way too long but uh, yeah let me know if you like the video make sure you check large blog post uh, to see all the details about documentation so i've just took a little bit of it and just shown, shown you how to do it. He has tons and tons of more useful information in his blog post. If you like the video as usual, let me know by liking it, share it with somebody that would like to know too. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I publish Power BI videos three times a week and click the bell to receive notifications. Okay. So have a great weekend. Bye.